In the last few weeks, there's been an explosion of propaganda, dank memes, and general shitposting rocking the community. And all of it has centered around one theme, war between the Imperium and Legacy. So today, I'm going to be giving you all of the context that you'll need to understand the history between these two groups, what's happened recently, and how that might spark another great block-level war in EVE Online. Now, before we get too deep into this, it does bear mentioning that Test Alliance and Goonswarm Federation, the two largest alliances and thus biggest political factors in Legacy and the Imperium respectively, have a decades-long and very, very interesting history. But fortunately for the length of this video, that isn't a major factor in current events. As such, the best place for us to start is actually back in 2017, which is relatively recently in EVE politics, when the Legacy Coalition first formed and their modern relationship with the Imperium really started. After taking space in the South by defeating the Stainwagon Coalition, Legacy Coalition found itself in an awkward spot. The majority of the alliances in the Coalition had been pushed out of the North by Panfam, and they had no real relationship with the major power of the East, the DRF. Meanwhile, the Imperium was in an equally isolated, although less precarious position. World War B, or the Casino War, had seen a mishmash of different player groups banding together to push the Imperium out of their holdings in the North just a year earlier in 2016. The aftermath of this led to multiple alliances that had been with the Imperium since its rebranding from the CFC, leaving the Coalition, most notably FCON and SMA, reducing the numbers that they could bring to the field. Both sides had a mutual interest in securing their current positions and minimising the threats that they had to be concerned about, so they ended up signing something called a Non-Invasion Pact, or a NIP. This set out a number of rules that both sides would agree to follow, with attacking certain regions and structures as well as cloaky camping being taken off the table. This allowed both of them to retain some form of friendly diplomatic relations, whilst remaining neutral and thus ostensibly hostile to one another on a day-to-day -day basis, something often derided as blutral by the wider community. If you want to find out more about the wider political context in which this deal was concluded, you can check the card linked in the top right, which is to my first ever Spheres of Influence video, which actually covers this time period. In the years following this nip being signed, both the Imperium and Legacy prospered and grew, outlasting many other coalitions and absorbing new space. During that time, their relationship also developed, going from begrudgingly neighbours to strategic allies, as the two of them fought side by side in wars against enemies across the map. Now, this really reached its peak in 2018, which was host to the last war in which we saw major supercapital versus supercapital engagements, and was caused by the northeastern bloc of HRE, Panfam, and Winterco facing off against the Imperium and Legacy as they stood together in their own bloc, equally imaginatively named as Imperial Legacy. As things stand in 2020 though, the Imperium and Legacy are no longer the same groups that had been beaten down and forced to retreat, like they were in 2017 when their NIP was initially signed, now being inarguably two of the three greatest powers on the map. This simple fact has rendered cooperation between the two of them much less of a given in recent months, with the first inklings that something might be on the horizon coming in the last few days of 2019, when Legacy declared their intent to attack Dead Coalition, despite the fact that the Imperium was supporting them. Whilst clashes between the Imperium and Legacy as a result of this were relatively minor, it was the first indication we rarely had that Legacy was willing to put other strategic goals ahead of their partnership with the Imperium. But with Dead Coalition falling and both sides returning home, it looked as though nothing would come of it. However, the power vacuum caused by Dead Coalition being removed from the northwest of the map would end up precipitating the next stage in all of this by allowing Pandafam, the third great power on the map, to deploy to pure blind and threaten the edges of Imperium territory. This was something the Imperium reacted to aggressively, deploying to the system of F7C in order to be able to quickly get their fleets into position and defend objectives in the area. This deployment would then escalate into a two-front war, as the Imperium began to battle snuffed out in the nearby Losec as well with a special interest group, 
attacking numerous structures across Black Rise. Whilst the Imperium was able to kill a notable amount of Athenor's Astra Houses and even a faction Fortazar, they suffered many losses in the process of doing so. This trend reached a dramatic climax in the fight over Nenamalia, which I covered in more detail in an earlier news piece. But to give a short recap, Pandafam and Snuffed Out were able to catch a number of Imperium capitals out of position and drop dreads on them, leading to nearly 400 billion isk in losses to the Imperium. Following this, the Imperium seems to have almost entirely vacated the Black Rice Theatre, with the exception of an appearance a week later in Pina Katosh, and the overall tenor of the deployment changed rather abruptly. Fighting in pure blind also began to slow down, with the last major clash between Panfam and the Imperium there being the battle in K4Y. A few days after which, the Imperium began to unanchor three keep stars in Cloud Ring. Each of those timers saw the presence of a huge standing guard to prevent Panfam or some other hostile group from trying to steal the structure, flexing an entire 256 titans in 6RC as they took objectives off of the table in exchange for making the region less defensible. Then on June the 17th, we found out why in a fireside chat from the Matani, where the plan for the Imperium to reposition with the intent of fighting a defensive war was announced. So where is this going? Uh, we're not going back to Delph. Uh, we are going to keep fighting because fuck you, that's why. Uh, however, we're not going to be fighting on a floodplain. That was the bigger lesson of the casino war. And so, looking at everything, we have decided, and it's the uh, autocrats, the Imperium, uh, fuck Cloud Ring, we're leaving. And in order to leave Cloud Ring, uh, we're going to pull back to J5A. Uh, we are going to spend this next week pulling down all of our shit in Cloud Ring and getting the fuck out. Because if all these bitches want to ball up with like 200 carriers on a Fortazar and have all the blocks together against us, I am delighted to have them storm the gates of Fortress Fountain and Fortress Delve. This announcement was met with a mixture of disbelief and mockery on Reddit, as the deployment had only been underway for a handful of weeks by that point, and the general conceit was that this caution was unfounded. But four days later, a different story entirely surfaced, as a screenshot from the legacy forums made its way onto Reddit, which announced their intention to break up the nip between them and the Imperium, which had defined the shape of Eva's politics for so long. This came with a two-week grace period attached to it in order to allow both sides to prepare, meaning that July the 5th is the day that any and all warfare between the two becomes unregulated diplomatically. And whilst there's no international court of justice to haul alliances in front of for breaking such diplomatic niceties, making such a declaration effectively a formality, it certainly does demonstrate intent to do something when that period expires on the part of Legacy. Following this, the Mitanni accused Legacy and Pandafam of having planned this reset in advance, with the intent of teaming up and quote-unquote backstabbing the Imperium. He would then go on to point to this video, which I'll link in the description below, from Talking In Stations as carrying evidence of this in a post that you can read in full on INN. But to summarise, it lays out the theory that Pro God Legend has been working to build a coalition of FCs similar to the one that was successful in World War B for another campaign against the Imperium. And this is something that does have some grounding in fact, with Pro God Legend making a statement which could be considered an allusion to plans for war with the Imperium on the 14th of June in a town hall for Test Alliance Please Ignore. We are going to make a major announcement and announce when the next Alliance meeting will be. And it will be a big Alliance meeting and it will involve our entire super fleet, everything. Well, we will move to what will essentially be our big summer, big summer event campaign, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, so that is, that is the plan for the next two weeks, basically. Um, well, we've done all that we can to stall with content, uh, generation and, and put ourselves in a pretty good situation. And I think we have, but it, it, it's time to make a move. Um, we cannot continue to hit cash at 0700, uh, unless we really want to make a commitment to it. Um, we've exhausted all of the content creation around our space. 
Um, so that leaves us with one option left, and I think you guys are aware what it might be. Contradicting this theory though, PandaFam has yet to make any moves that match up with a narrative other than those already observed, and ProGod Legend didn't mention Legacy expecting any allies. Whilst PandaFam's deployment in XTAC 7 is taking advantage of the pullback, so far it's only been over small objectives, like adding a 6th Fortizar kill to their tally in Pure Blind. I asked representatives from both Legacy and PanFam about this topic, but as of the time of writing, both have declined to comment. With that though, we reach the present point in EVE politics, as we all eagerly wait for July the 5th to arrive. We have seen a few preliminary skirmishes between Legacy and the Imperium since the announcement of the end of the NIP, but the rules are still being respected at the time of writing. The question that's obviously on most people's minds is how long are those rules going to be left unbroken, and perhaps more importantly, where are those rules going to be broken and with what tools? After all, Legacy using a few Munim fleets to help take Sov in Cloud Ring would be a very different impact than deploying their super capital fleet to period basis and starting to siege down keep stars. The former deployment based style of warfare is something that we've seen a lot of in the past 18 months, with groups being willing to join in on wars but very rarely deploying strategic assets like super capitals to them. And often these wars have also been fought between the blocks over the territory of allies, which made any losses seem relatively less important to the biggest groups involved. How little the death of an entire coalition in the recent Dead Coalition vs Panfam war seems to have shifted public opinion on the realness of Nolsec war serves as a testament for how little the overall community feel it to have mattered, even if I don't agree with the position myself. By contrast, in 2018, we saw multiple major supercapital engagements such as UALX, which were not only reported on by the game's media, but also played a huge role in shaping the balance of power for years to come, as alliances put meaningful assets on the line and lost them. That is what people are hoping this conflict might be, something with long-lasting consequences where both sides really press the other to their limits. But one important wrinkle here that concerns all three of the forces, and arguably makes a true war to the death less likely, is the existence of the Tranquility Trade Tower, or TTT. This is the Keepstar in Perimeter, which was originally launched by the Imperium and Legacy back in 2018, with the aim of monopolising trade near Jitter in order to receive taxes from it. Since then, PanFam has also been allowed to join in on this profit-sharing agreement, following a campaign of warfare and harassment against the structure in order to earn their place at the table. This means that even as the three coalitions are at war, they're still working together on some level to ensure a hegemony over HiSec and retain a financial interest in one another's existence. As such, this is something that I'll be keeping an eye on as an indicator for exactly how bitter whatever war comes about actually is, as someone has access to the button there that turns off sending money to the other side, and I really want to see if that gets pushed. So, is another supersized war with headline grabbing amounts of ISK being destroyed coming? The honest answer is that I don't know, and the few people who do know either aren't talking or have a vested interest in convincing you that one is coming. But what I can say is that for the first time in two years, it feels like all the pieces are in place for this to escalate, and that alone is very exciting. Add on to that the fact that the people who are in charge of making these decisions are certainly banging the war drum, and well, it certainly doesn't seem unlikely. Anyway, this situation is evolving rapidly, so please make sure to subscribe for updates in the near future about whatever goes on, be it diplomatic or military, in EVE Online. A special thanks as always goes out to our Crassuses, Brood from Northern Coalition, Zolka Lando and Jessica, alongside two anonymous donors. Thanks also go out to our $5 and above patrons in January Valentine, Big Bada Boom, Zar, Dunk Dinkle, Miss Moses, Kem, The Ashfell Celestial Academy, Closer Canty, Crazy Daisy, Ulrich Bluthers, Omnitious Shardan, Jersey Abbo, Marius Pont Mercy and Padrick Miller. If you want to join them in supporting the channel yourself, you can either check out the Patreon link in the description below, or if you'd like, just share the video with some other people who you think might enjoy it. 
Until next time, have a good day and fly smart.